All right, uh, good morning. It should be, well, for me, it's Friday. Um, we started this worksheet yesterday. For those of you that may not have been here, or for those of you that are just watching this, uh, we went over and discussed a couple of the questions uh, on the adding and subtracting worksheet. Uh, I, I asked you to do two of those problems uh, on your own. Uh, and on your work paper, question number seven, you should have gotten eight squared of two minus 17 squared of seven. Or you could have put this backwards. You could have put minus 17 squared of seven plus eight square root of two. Either or would have been, excuse me, would have been acceptable answers. And number eight, five square root of five plus six square root of two. And obviously you could have flip flopped those as well. Right? So if you're having questions on these problems, adding and subtracting, let me know. I didn't get a lot of questions yesterday, so I'm assuming we're all experts at it, which I know is not true because we're still having issues with uh, squaring and whatnot. All right, a couple examples here that we started with, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna bounce around and just and hit a few of these problems here. Um, it says when multiplying radicals, you multiply the factors in, in the separate radicals back together. So we're gonna multiply, like here, they give you an example, radical A, radical B, they can become radical AB and we want to be sure to remove all perfect squares. All right, so like I'm just going to start with, uh, actually I'm going to do number three, all right? Um, when I look at number three, I'm going to go ahead and multiply the coefficients, which the coefficient of three x is one. So one times five, because I multiply those coefficients, they're both outside. And then since I multiply the radicals together, I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite this as three times x times six times x. Now. Again, the object is to factor. So I could multiply everything together and multiply three times six and get 18. I could go ahead and get 18 and I could multiply x times x and get x squared. But then I have to factor this anyway. So why multiply it to go back and refactor it? I'm just gonna leave it as factors and six can be factored. Six isn't a perfect square, neither is three, but it can be factored. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rewrite this again, one times five the square root of 3 times x times 2 times 3 times x. It's all factored. Now, with this, and this is why I show the grouping and removing, because with this, you need to go ahead and make sure you find your groups. Two of the same creates a perfect square. We need to understand that. I have two threes. I'm linking them with a row. They create a perfect square. I have two x's. Hopefully you can see this. I'm going to link them together with a row. That means I can remove one of them, because 3 times 3 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. So what do I do? Now that I've identified all my perfect squares, I get to remove. So the 1 times 5, I'm just going to go ahead and write that as 5, because that's, that's what that is. All right, so there's my 5. I'm going to cross out both of these 3s, because again, 3 times 3 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. I get to take 1, 3 out. I've crossed them out, so I, I've used them. That lets me know I've used them. And I have two x's. x times x is x squared. Anytime you have something squared, it creates a perfect square. Now, what's the only thing that's left? The only thing that's left is the square root of two, and I can go ahead and multiply what I take out, multiply what's left in. Five times three is 15, x to the square root of two. There's my answer for that one, all right? So you have to pay attention to what you're doing, all right? Um, moving on, I'm gonna skip five, because five's pretty easy, all right? We covered that uh, type of topic in class. I'm going to move to the harder one, which is number six. I'm going to show you one like uh, number six here. And what do we have to do with number six? What you should see with number six is that it's indicating multiplication, distribution. How I, how Mr. Wilson shows distribution is I simply just draw two little arrows. What that lets me know is it lets me know that I need to multiply the first term times both terms in parentheses. Five times four, 20. Five times the coefficient of negative square root of two is one. Five times one is five. Well, five times negative one is negative five square root of two. Done. It's that simple. All right. Um, formulas. Find the area of each square, just so we know. This is seven. That is three. How do you find the area of a rectangle? You should know these formulas. The formula is area equals length times width. Number nine. My dimensions. My altitude is eight. My base is eight. How do we find the area of a triangle? Anybody remember? Hopefully you do. Area is equal to one half, base times height, 
and you should be able to do number 10, and I'm just going to tell you its dimensions are 9 and 9. All right. Now as we get down to multiplying, okay, we get down to a little bit more complex stuff, I'm just going to pick one that we can look at, uh, and I'm going to pick number 4, because I'm not going to take time to do all these. All right. Not all of you are going to work on these, and I do want to show you uh, one of the area down here. I'll probably pick the triangle maybe, I don't know. Right? But again, here, I could multiply 15 times 10, but why am I going to do that? I'm just going to factor everything, because they're both radicals, I'm going to write it underneath one radical. But I want to pick, if I can, I want to pick things that are perfect squares, or factor them so that they're perfect squares. Well, 15 is not a perfect square, so I do have to multiply uh, right factors, excuse me, of 3 times 5. But look at this m cubed. How else could I write m cubed but write it as a perfect square? I could rewrite it as m squared times n. Make that an m, not an n. Right? Same thing, just that this is a perfect square. So that's what I'm going to do. m squared times m, and then I have the 10. What is 10? The factors of 10 are 2 times 5, and then I have m squared. m squared is a perfect square. So now I can highlight my perfect squares. All right, what are they? Well, if I have two of the same number, do I have two threes? No. Do I have two fives? Yes. So I have two fives. I'm going to link them with the chain. Do I have two M's? Yes, I have two M's right here. So that only gets circled once. That M is by itself. This is two M's. I only, and, and so now I'm going to end up with a three by itself, an M by itself, and a two by itself. That's what I'm going to end up with. Take out what's perfect. Five times five is 25. The square root of 25 is five. So I can take out a five and I'm going to cross off what I used. Now watch this. Pay attention to this. M squared is a perfect square. So I'm going to take out an M. I use that once. See how it's squared? M is by itself. No other by themselves M's. There's an M over here, but it's already a perfect square. So I'm going to take out another M. So I use that. I've crossed out what I've taken out. Now I leave what is in. So 3M2. Now I multiply what I've taken out. I multiply what's in. So 5M squared times the square root of 6 M. There is your simplified radical, right? So you have to pay attention to that. You, got, you have to try these. We'll go over that more in class. Ask questions if you need to. And then down here, this is the same. This is the same as what we did up there, area, right? Area is equal to length times width. What's your length? Some of you might say your length is the square root of 5. Your width is 2 square roots of 5. Okay, well, remember, I can only combine like right. I can only multiply radicals together. I can't multiply 5 times 2 times 5. You can't do that. Radical 5 times radical 5 can be multiplied. So I could rewrite this because I can multiply in any order if I want. I could rewrite this as 2 times radical 5 times radical 5. These two make a perfect square. So I can pull out a 5. And what is 2 times 5? Therefore, my sideways smiley is my therefore. Therefore, my answer is 10. All right? Use the same formulas for 13 and 14. All right? So there's, there's your... There's your, your help with this assignment. If you need to ask questions, this is tough, okay? Ask me some questions.